I started fiddle really, I suppose you, you have to go back to, to about age five. So there was one night that um, I had, I'd be sharing my bed with my brother. I was brought up in a, f- a farm, dairy farm, um, just outside Tarland, and um, we'd quite frequently be staying with my, gran- my grandparents. The minute I heard Granny close the living room door, we were up, lights were on, investigating. Under the bed, we found an old fiddle, in a fiddle case. Yeah, so it is my life. Now, I don't know what else I would do if I wasn't doing this. If I I couldn't play the fiddle tomorrow, I would be really... What could I do? I don't know. The East Winds Project came to mind after quite a few years of visiting friends in the islands in Scotland. It occurred to me that the kids in London are very immediate, there's a lot more people. So everything's always about consumerism and about immediacy. And up in the islands, you very rarely get internet connection. And it's just not so accessible as an area, and it's a slower pace of life. So I thought it would be really fun to bring young people of the same age together to see what would happen. My first thought when I heard about the Shetland Islands was that it's going to be quite quiet, possibly boring. That's in Scotland, it's quite far north, but when I actually looked at a map, it was like, it's basically Norway. I had no idea where Norway was. <laughs> I thought Norway was next to France. Please place all doors into automatic and cross check. When I asked my exchange student, David Williamson, if there was McDonald's, and he said no, and I was so shocked. I've never done something like this before. You get a chance to know people from London and their kind of personalities. I've never been to London. What I'm really looking forward to having shops. There's tons of shops there. I like to kind of just see the most traffic and you know, a lot of buildings and that and see what it's like around there. I'm excited for going to London with my violin and playing in front of large audiences. I just really want to see like all the big shops and, and see how busy it is compared to Shetland. In India, you don't have orchestras, you don't have workshops, you don't have uh, meets like this where you meet other violinists of different art forms and work. If your goal is to be a violinist, a full-time violinist, a professional violinist, you have to work hard. Start. One, two, three. From starting from there, just to check the tune, please. D, D. D. The thing that I like the most about this project is to be able to like get an understanding of the different types of music, because obviously there's the Carnatic Indian style violin playing. My great grandmother was a Carnatic violinist, and no one else has picked up any instruments since her. So I decided that I'd be the first one. I've... Well, the violin that I learned, Carnatic violin, it's a very sophisticated but nice thing to learn. I've never seen an Indian violinist that kind of, I've never seen it I, when I looked it up and I was like, oh, they sit on the floor and it's kind of, it, it's quite weird. It's kind of, it's a lot different to standing up and playing and instead of sitting on the ground and putting your uh, foot in between your ankles and it's kind of a bit different. Music is a lifestyle. All your life, you'll always be a student. Though you achieve something, success is always there. But uh, there is no end to learning.
Okay? So start from the beginning. Ready? Go. I prefer to play on the stage with people rather than playing by myself because when I play a solo and I make a mistake then I get, I kind of freak out a bit. I feel like it's lots of people playing together so they all kind of connect to each other and I feel like if you mess up it's more, it's better because someone else can save you rather than just saving yourself. We now present Sara Sanetra. This is a composition in Ragam Shankarabharnam or an A major scale. Sarasanetra in Shankaraba. The group uh, of, of very strong and very interested young people, and it's just incredible how quickly they will go out and play. My favourite feeling when I pick up my instrument and start to play is that I feel very relaxed and I kind of zone out. It's a way to be creative in my own way and I really enjoy it. When I teach, I do always add in a creative element. If I'm teaching violin, I always do some improvisation or I get my pupils to compose a little piece or a little tune. I had this piece that someone wrote ages ago. I added a few tweaks so that make the music more different than it usually is played as. It's kind of like a massive community and then we all like have our own things and we can like compose and like do what you want with it. And I had never been taught it but I just love the idea of doing it and so I think music is just in you, inside you, and you can find out how it manifests itself. I was a boy of six when I started violin, so I initially went just for the force of my parents and I had a lot of respect for my parents and fear. So I was just, I did what was told to me. God has been kind to me. I am able to understand music, play something, and I'm now proud to be a teacher and spread this art form to my younger generation. When I grow up, I want to hopefully be a school's music teacher. I like playing folk traditional set of music because I get a lot of freedom with, I can just improvise and mix up tunes. Being a Shetlander, um, it's um, surrounded by traditional Shetland music, folk music, um, and it's just, it's a massive part of my life. When I heard fiddle players playing such beautiful music that I just felt inspired and I always wanted to reach the levels that they can play at and I always want to be slightly better. I always want to be able to play that tune. When I play the fiddle I feel like really away from everything. If I'm playing a tune that I know really well I can just play it and think of things quietly in my head, just go over what's happened and stuff. When I first heard about the East Winds project, I immediately thought that it would be a really good experience. And the whole time there's like always music, like people playing music and play the violin and that. So 
you're with people who love playing music and like be able to have like such a cultural and musical experience. I found with East Winds that it's, it's bringing back memories, um, happy memories from when I was a child, doing similar experiences. Shetland and London are opposite ends of the country. I think it's a brilliant experience for the Londoners to come up here and experience Shetland life. And then for some of the Shetlanders, it'll be a little bit bizarre for them going so far away from home without their parents. Tell me anything about London. Good, bad. London is a very crazy city. All day there's cars going beep, 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 beep at other cars. Because you know what cars are like, they're annoying and stuff. Anyway. Well, first of all, I take it to McDonald's. And then I'll take it to probably one of London's um, biggest attractions in London Eye, if you haven't seen that. And um, I'd really like to see the Big Ben and see just kind of like how tall it actually is and just see what it's like around there and how busy it is. Yeah. What's your, like, the funniest moment you've had living in London? <laughs> well, I was coming back from school and I was getting off the bus and then it was like, I left my bag on the bus. So I was coming downstairs, then I quickly ran back upstairs to go and get my bag. And as I was getting off the bus, the driver was closing the doors. So I got my foot stuck in the door and he started driving. He didn't drive that far, but he just started driving a bit. And I was just there, people started banging on the windows and stuff. And then eventually he stopped, but I was scary. I could have died. I would fully expect that it's probably going to change some of their lives. I reckon some of these kids will probably remain friends in, into adulthood. You have to sort of assume that they love music before they've come to a project like this and that they've got that kind of passion for music. This song's called The Sportsman's Horn Pipe, but I don't have any backstory to it. Just know it. I really like playing folk because in it you can just take a piece and do anything with it, so long as it sounds a bit like the original melody. Who's the youngest person here? Barney. Well, I was probably 10 or 11 when I learned Bankery, Spain Real Society Junior section by ear. Generally used music, to be honest, but that tune would be picked up by ear and I have never forgot it. Mm. <laughs> it just shows you, it's, it's one of these things, I think if you learn things by ear and you pay attention, it, it's, it seems to get into the brain more deeply. So we're going to try this, I'm going to play it through the whole thing once. So it goes like this. Some people call the violin the fiddle because it's actually the same instrument, but when you say fiddle you kind of mean you're playing folk music instead of like classical and stuff. I used to compete. Second half. I liked to win. I never let second was never good enough. I always oh, I'm gonna do better next time. I can honestly say I get far more pleasure from seeing my pupils winning prizes than I ever got by winning a prize myself. Helped somebody else achieve a similar goal, I think that that makes me feel good. Wins project for me I really enjoy seeing how they develop how they learn um, I know that for them it's a life-changing experience and that's kind of what I was seeking to achieve through this project 